I want to cover some special situations here uh, dealing with the limits of the natural log of x, e to the x, and a couple other special situations that I just want to review with you. First, I want you to look over here at um, these numerical values that I posted from graphing calculator. The natural log of 2000 is 7.6. The natural log of 20,000 is just 9.9. .9. The natural log graph does not take off to infinity. Typically in calculus situations, um, if they ask you to evaluate the limit of natural log, um, it's just going to be a situ whatever, the natural log of 3x as x approaches um, some value. It could be infinity, um, but not usually. Usually they'll just give you something like 10. Um, you just plug it in. Uh, e, however, look at this, e to just the 100th power, if I put in x is 100, I get 2.68 times 10 to the 43rd. That's 2.6 with, you know, 43 zeros after it. So that's a really, really big number. So you move the decimal 43 places to the right. So if I'm ever taking the limit of e to the x as it approaches positive infinity, it's infinity. But you have to consider what's going on with these things numerically. What if I were to do the limit as x approaches infinity, um, or let's say as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x? Well, now I'm plugging in negative x values. So this really becomes 1 divided by e to a big number. So this would be zero if you're doing the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So you have to consider what's going on numerically when you're dealing with the limit um, of e to the x. Just like this number 12 up here um, that you uh, ran into in today's assignment, well, it's the limit as x approaches infinity. Well, if I'm considering the limit as x approaches infinity of negative e to the negative 3x, well, think if I put a really big number in here for x. If I plug that in, I'm going to have negative e to, it really doesn't matter what it is, it's a negative big number, which means it's negative 1 divided by this e to the big number, like this. So in this case, this expression right here is going to be equal to zero. So on number 12, this little thing right here, the limit of just the e, negative e to the negative 3x is zero. And I'll let you finish that problem. Another special situation is, and that's gonna, this next one is going to help you with this number 11. And that is this situation. How about the natural log of x over x? What does that look like as we go to infinity? Well, let's turn to the graphing calculator and let's put it in real quick. y equals the natural log of x divided by x. And I'm going to go to my window, and I'm going to go from negative 10 to like um, 200. And I'm going to go up by 20s. And my I'm going to make my y minimum negative 5 and my y maximum just positive 5. And let's look at the graph. I think it's obvious, as we approach infinity, the natural log of x over x equals zero. All right, so if I'm going to do the limit, this is what we would call a, spe a special situation. The limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of x over x is going to be equal to zero. Why does that matter? Because look what I've got here. I've got the natural log of x over x to the fourth. If I have the natural log of x, over x to the fourth, I can think of this as the natural log of x over x times one over x to the third. All right, so 
Obviously, this is going to be 0. And 1 divided by a really huge number, if we're approaching infinity, is also going to be 0. And that should uh, help you on number 11. That was, that's another special situation, just like the one we learned last fall. Remember this one? Sine x over x. Remember math girl? If I do the limit as x approaches infinity of this, it's 0. But if I do the limit of this one as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, it's equal to 1. And uh, remember, that was the roller coaster one that kind of oscillated here. And then it came up, and we had this discontinuity, this removable discontinuity. And it came down, and then it oscillated around the x-axis. So that's just a little review of, of some special situations. And um, the main thing on these E problems is you must consider them numerically. What is happening numerically as we approach a really large positive or negative number? And you have to remember that if I have E to a negative X, that's the same thing as 1 over E to the X. And so just remember your properties of exponents, and I think that will help you on problems 11 through 14, and we'll stop there.